Severance has been widely praised and commended in the two months since it's out. It was a refreshing comeback to the thriller genre of television shows. Known for keeping you on your toes throughout every episode, this is a dystopian depiction of how one solves their personal problems while at work. Murder, mystery, intrigue, romance, you name it, Severance has it. But one thing many viewers noticed was the recurrence of hidden clues throughout each episode that alluded to how the mystery could be solved expertly added in within each scene. First up, who are you? The first dialogue of the season is the words, who are you? Something noteworthy as this is both a reference to the last episode, the we we are, a play off the title of Dr. Ricken's book, Then You You Are. Next, hell and further references. In the first shot, the table in the boardroom Haley is laid down upon gives the viewer very coffin-like vibes, considering its shape and dimensions around her body. Also, the word hell is is referenced many times throughout the season. Really, you couldn't forget it if you tried. To refer to the Lumen workplace, even episode one is called Good News About Hell. Though we're pretty sure it's just a metaphor, we can't be too certain. Even on Helly's first day, we see the words, Hello, Hell, written across a whiteboard. The rest of her name conveniently obstructed. Up next, red, blue, and green. The show does an excellent job of using symbolism to depict the severance experienced between the worker's personal and professional lives. In every aspect of the filmmaking process, for example, when Mark leaves work, a bunch of snow divides or severs the parking spaces. There is a red car in the parking space to his left and a blue one on the one to his front right, leaving space for his neutral colored car in the middle. A clear depiction of how he himself goes back and forth between these worlds. Honestly, it's pretty clear that the directors decided to choose red and blue as the main colors and stick to them only. You'd have to be colorblind to not have known Notice. For example, Mark's house is entirely hued blue. Then he has one red fish and another blue one. His office has red and blue paper. Koble's office floor is blue as well. The examples are limitless. The motive seems to be to show how this world is split. The two contrasting colors conjure images of the red and blue pill from The Matrix and Alice in Wonderland, where one pill reveals the true world and the other leaves you in ignorant bliss. Another major color used is green. Almost the entire office is covered in it. Green is used to represent sickness, eeriness, and ailment, a telling choice for the severed macro refinement team. Green also happens to be one of the first colors used in Jane Egan's first prototype of the chip, used in the severance process, with the other color being blue. Helly's dress at the gala, along with her earrings, are shades of blue and green, too. Next, wellness meetings. Another thing we notice is how most of Mark and Casey's interactions happen within the wellness meeting room, where two very interesting options objects are shown to us. The red-green candle that Miss Coble stole from Mark's basement from a bin labeled Gemma's Crafts, Gemma being Miss Casey. We've hypothesized that Coble may be trying to see whether this interaction with such objects may be the little push either of them needs to recognize the other. Mark also molds a tree out of clay, which unforgettably is what Gemma allegedly crashed her car into and died. Then we have Coble. Coble gives two contradictory statements about her mother. Numero uno, in the office, she tells Mark her mother was an atheist. Numero dos, in the outside world, she tells him her mother was a devout Catholic. With extremely conflicting information, there's a lot of mystery surrounding Coble's mother. Known as Charlotte Coble, we are shown a hospital band with her name labeled on it next to Coble's shrine, too. It is attached to a feeding slash breathing tube, and we are hit with the realization that Coble could be secretly planning revenge on Lumen for playing a role in her mother's death would have thought. Coble's room, on the other hand, also resembles a prison. It features drab and gloomy lighting with next to no furniture and a complete lack of homeliness. Or lived in comfort, her shrine, though, has a lot of detail to offer. There's a photo of her as a child attending the Myrtle Egan School for Girls, which was where she probably wound up after her mother passed. Now we have Irving and the black paint. In episode two, there's an easy-to-miss shot of Irving looking at black paint in between his nails. It is later revealed that his Audi is a painter who specializes in only painting that creepy black hallway with an elevator at the end of it that only goes down, another hell-related reference. The black goo that Irving sees dripping down his cubicle walls is a manifestation of the black paint from the outside world seeping into his office life, or so we think. Up next, paintings. Many paintings can be found in season one of the show, including Care's Taming of the Tempers, hung outside of the wellness office, which represents 
sense anger, joy, fear, and sadness. Manifested in the four characters depicted in the painting, including a jester and court. Later, there's a strange dance performance by the same characters after Dylan finishes his waffle part. Goats appear several times throughout the show, especially in the background of Devon and Rickon's home. Moreover, after the strange waffle dance, Dylan uncovers his cat of nine tails whip, the same one Care holds in the painting of the Taming of the Tempers too. Of course, Tame the Tempers, each of the tails represents one of Care's nine virtues. Then the department where people don't leave. It seems as though Miss Casey has always been here in the perpetuity wing. We see how all the CEOs of Lumen are members of the Egan family, with Care Egan, the founder of the company. The name Care itself is derived from Gaelic, and it's quite literally means the Dark One. Next, Remedium Hominibus, directly translated to a cure given to mankind. We see this phrase on Mark's car number plate, a direct reference to how Lumen first started off as a medical company. We've connected the dots. Trust us. Up next, Miss Casey awake. Miss Casey tells Mark in his wellness meeting that the eight hours she spent looking after Helly was the longest she hasn't been asleep at a stretch. It is revealed that she'd only been awake for 107 hours in total. This may suggest that her other self could be in some sort of a coma, while her work self struggles to keep up. Then the empty workspace. The Lumen's workspace is extremely empty by workplace standards. There are several pieces of furniture covered in white sheets, almost as if the company's expecting more workers to come to settle in. Mark's Audi even remarks that the company homes in which he lives are relatively empty. When combined with James's remark that he wants everyone in the world to be chipped, it leads to viewers to believe that Lumen will be expanding its workforce. First, however, they need to cross some political hurdles. But that's a story only the show will tell. At the end of the day, it is obvious Lumen has not reached its full potential by any means, but fully intends on doing so. Now we have Helly and Mark. In episode 5, we see this painting called The Courtship of Care and Imogen, who fell in love while working together at an ether factory, with Helena being Egan and her Innie establishing a romantic connection with her work partner Mark. The parallels between the two are unmistakable, and it is definitely an intentional move on the director's part. Next, outdated technology. One thing that will cross your mind while watching Severance, if it hasn't already that is, is how old and outdated their technology looks. This actually serves many purposes. For starters, their work is protected from conventional hacking methods. Also, a little psychological manipulation. This type of nostalgia may make the workers more at ease with their office life. At the same time, it creates a drastic contrast with the outside world and is set in around 2020, as evidenced by the date on Mark's driver's license. Though smartphones and modern tech were very much a thing of the present, the workers are made to work like they're not. And finally, P.E. The state abbreviation used throughout the season is P.E. This is weird because there's no American state with the abbreviation P.E. It makes it seem as if the show is set in an alternate reality. We wouldn't be shocked if it was. That's a wrap for this video. What did you think of Severance's ending? Do our context clues help reach a conclusion? Is there anything else you noticed? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. See you in the next one.